That's All right, guys, we are back with episode seven of the Belt Off podcast. Back with Dylan and Nick, and I got some stuff to talk about. So last night, fucked up my ribs, uh, shoulder issue. So rolling with a highly competitive blue belt. Um, we were going back and forth. It was, you know, really good. He has, you know, about forty pounds on me. Not about one forty. I think he's about one eighty. And we were going back and forth. I was, I had taught in the kids' class, you know, how to keep your feet in between and lasso over to keep, you know, them in behind, uh, to keep them behind your feet, right? So you establish your grips and then you keep them in front of you so that they can't pass to side control. And so we were going back and forth for probably about a minute. And he's trying to pass, trying to pass, having some pretty good luck, but I'm able to pull it back and everything. And at a certain point, he decided to not go technical and just slam his way in. Ooh. And <laughs> crack, 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 pop, and there goes the ribs and things. So I'm doing a little bit better now, but last night was rough. But things like this don't need to happen, right? Um, they do happen. He felt bad, you know, he didn't intend for it to happen and everything, but we got to prevent these things. So when you're rolling with somebody around your size, your bone structure and your body compensation is the same, right? So your ribs are the same size and everything. When you're rolling with somebody that's much bigger than you, and I'm not talking about like fat, but like just bigger than you. Their bones are literally bigger than yours. Yeah, solid rock. So your (laughs) bones are going to snap. Uh, bend, break before theirs will. Yeah. And so that's not really what we're trying to do because it wasn't very technical. Now, if applying pressure to somebody is fine, you can stack 350 pounds on top of me and I'm perfectly fine. Now, if you drop that 350 pounds on me, now I'm in a world of hurt yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. broken. Uh, so when you're rolling with smaller guys, you got to keep that in mind. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, and it's not that you can't apply the pressure. I was rolling with a guy, you know, last week, week week and a half ago, and he's like, sorry, I'm putting the pressure on you. No, 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 you have the ability to put pressure on me. I have the ability to move and create frames, apply the pressure. Just don't atomic bomb it on me. (laughs) So hug me, squeeze me, apply your force, but just don't drop it on me. And that's where the things, and that's where he had come in is, you know, he just dropped an atomic elbow on me, basically. And it was like, and I heard the crack and I heard everything. And it's like, man, that was I, so I heard messy. it. You seem like you were in pain. Oh, it was brutal. <laughs> uh, ribs suck because then you can't breathe or anything. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was rough. So made for a rough night and everything. So for you guys out there, if you're the bigger guy, I'm about 140. Uh, if you're the bigger guy, Act like it, right? Definitely, Even definitely. if the person below you is getting squirrely and moving around and you can't control it, all right, back out. Make sure, because I had really good grips and that was part of the issue. Yeah. Instead of technically backing out, popping the grips off, re entering, it was F your grips, I'm coming through. And so his weight was detoured, right? But it still smashed on top of yeah. me. Uh, Probably wouldn't have gotten the pass uh, even doing that, but it just obviously put me out for the rest of the night, Uh, and I probably can't roll for the next few days. But for sure, if you're a bigger guy, just keep that in mind that you don't don't resort to force over technique. Definitely, that's how I feel too with like newer white belts, bigger bigger white belts that come in. And I'm rolling with them, and it's just they're muscling through everything. Yeah. And you know, this dude's got 50 pounds on me, and he's just yeah. crushing me. And I'm just like, Ugh! Yeah. you know, and I'm like, fuck. With a white belt, I expect that. I expect the unexpected with yeah, a white yeah. belt. And so I eliminate space. So instead of pl- trying to like play that open guard stance like what I was doing with him, he's an experienced blue belt, uh, looking at purple, but can't get purple without fixing these types of things, right? This is a that was a white belt thing to do. Um, And so when you're rolling with somebody who has more experience and they're being technical, they're being technical, and then they run into the wall of just like, okay, I've been trying this for a minute and a half. Let me just smash my way in. Um, It just shows that either your ego got involved or something got involved instead of trying to figure out a technical way, which would make your jujitsu better, right? If you just smash your way in, 
your jujitsu is never going to get better. There's going to be a bigger person that you can't smash your way yeah, in on. Yeah. Now, if you develop the technique to get past my guard, there you go. You can get past, you know, more people's guard in the future that are bigger than you based on your technique. Now, muscle amplifies your technique. If you're just smashing or lifting and doing the things, you're never going to develop that, yeah. that technique. Now, if you're a big, strong guy, that muscle will amplify every single technique that you do have. Yeah. So if you're doing a hip bump sweep, now you're doing a hip bump sweep on turbo, right? Yeah, and you yeah, can yeah. blast through a hip bump sweep and not worry about your partner getting hurt because you're not crashing on them. You're launching them, but you're not crashing on them. And so you can apply a lot of force to people in a lot of different ways, uh, but it's controlled because you're using a technique to yeah. do it. Uh, rather than just trying to find a hole and bulldoze through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah, it, I heard it too. It definitely sounded like you were hurt. Yeah. And you, you're a smaller guy now, right? You started yeah. at 240. Yeah. So what was your... Because when did you start jujitsu? Well, around what? Wait, 200? Pro probably like 200, yeah. 200 pounds. 190. So you went from competing, I think you competed at 180, right? Yeah, my first one. And yeah. then also down at 135. What did you feel like the difference was between... I know you weren't like a fit 180, 190. Yeah. Uh, the bigger guys were definitely, you know, probably out muscling you. Oh, yeah, at the, for sure. At the higher end. But what was your experience going from a higher weight bracket down to the lower brackets? Oh, the lower lower bracket felt natural. You know, it felt, mm -hmm. like, it, it felt like it was supposed to be because we're the same weight, yeah. you know? And like... The higher bracket, like, yeah, I'm the same weight, but these dudes are, like, lean, yeah. you know, 180. Yeah. I'm fat 180. So it, it was definitely, definitely different, and I was getting crushed, and mm -hmm. 135 was was way better, you know? Do you feel like the weight was a buffer, uh, even though it wasn't, like, muscle and everything? I, I'm interested because I've never had extra weight on me. Yeah. Do you feel like it was easier to withstand somebody's pressure with the extra weight on you? You just... Or was it the same pressure? You just couldn't move as much, or uh, it it was a little bit of a buffer, you yeah. know. But I still felt more pressure yeah. than being, you know, one eighty yeah. versus you know me yeah. being fat. So I've gained about ten pounds over the last like six months, nine months. Uh, really trying to bulk up a little bit. I've never been this heavy in my life, and I felt like. Uh, less risk of injuries everything just feels a little more solid okay. uh, and so a little bit more endurance when i'm rolling with the bigger guys and everything and i just feel a little more solid and that's only 10 pounds right yeah. so i've been doing it right with the kettlebells and the weight training and yeah, everything definitely. uh so it's not i'm just gaining mass but i'm actually putting you know structure to my body yeah. And so I felt a difference in that of like I can hold certain things, I can go to different certain angles. When I stiff arm, I don't have to worry about my arm being bent so much. Yeah. Just little things like that with the extra 10 pounds has made a huge difference. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because yeah. the technique was behind it. And then, you know, at a certain point, the, the arm just breaks down yeah. because it doesn't have that, you know, tinsel strength to exactly. it. Exactly. But, but with, like, yeah, 10, actually, 15 pounds, that's, yeah. that's good for you. Yeah. Like, like that's probably where you're supposed to be, about where you're supposed to be. It is. Give, give I'm take. in that BMI yeah, range yeah, yeah, now. Exactly. Where at the my entire life, I've always been just a hair below the yeah. BMI on the low side of things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And where, where I was at 180 for my height and everything, I was way over. Way over so yeah. so it, it's, it's a little different. Like, for mm -hmm. you, you, you feel good. For me, yeah. I felt... I yeah. felt horrible. I mean, I felt better then than I did at 240. Yeah. But big difference, you know. Where has been your best feeling weight? Has it been at the 130 that I think you're around now or 140? Because you've experienced them all. Yeah. Uh, I say right now I feel I feel pretty good, and I'm 133 right now. But uh, I'm eating more carbs and more calories. Yeah. So And, and I feel like my muscles feel fuller too, and yeah. so I'm like, I feel really good, and I have energy, and I'm sleeping sleeping more. So right now, I probably feel the best I've I felt, but I don't know if that's because the calories, the carbs, yeah. or if that's just now I'm getting to where I'm supposed to be sure. rather than where I was. I Most of my adult life, I was right around 130 to 135, right where you are now. Yeah. Uh, 
but I'm taller than you, right? So where I am now probably is equivalent to where you are in your weight range as far as like BMI goes. Yeah. So that's interesting because at this point I am feeling, you know, the fuller yeah, yeah, and everything. Yeah. I've had a lot of uh, comments on like my chest looks bigger, my shoulders look bigger, yeah, that yeah, sort of biceps, thing. Yeah, biceps, everything. Mm-hmm. I which, see it too. Which is interesting, <laughs> which is because I've never been able to gain weight previously. And I've done like all the different, you know, diets and... 1500 calorie shakes and yeah. everything just nothing would stick and i've done you know everyone's like oh do it dirty you know eat ice yeah. cream and i've done all that yeah. i've tried like should i still eat ice cream <laughs> <laughs> 10 solid years of me trying to gain weight and i almost gave up with it but uh now i'm 36 years old now and so th- the weight's actually sticking, and I'm actually feeling like I can bulk a little bit and add well, the What muscle. are you doing differently? Anything? So the fitness class that we have in oh, okay. the in the studio here, I think, has made a huge difference. Yeah. I've seen a bunch of studies that say, you know, if you're doing a lot of weights over your head, that sort of thing, or pull-ups, that'll build, like, testosterone, that sort yeah. of thing. But uh, I think consistency with the offset weight. So. Oh, okay. I've been swinging things like the mace bells, the kettlebells. I haven't yeah. stepped my foot into a gym, so I haven't done anything that's like in Solid line bench or yeah. bench press or anything like that. Calisthenics, you know, crawls, that sort of thing. Yeah. And then uh, body movement stuff and then the maces and the kettlebells. So with those two things, you're always off center and your body's constantly trying to correct. Yeah. When you're swinging the mace bell, Everyone thinks, and I thought it was going to be a, an awesome shoulder workout, and I have gained way more shoulder mobility. Yeah. Like when people would throw on an Americana, I'd be like turning towards it to go belly down basically because my arm wouldn't go flat to the ground. Yeah. And with all the mason work and everything, that did get way better. So oh, my okay, mobility nice. and strength did nice. get better. Definitely. But where I feel like it really improved was down through my core. Every time that, that ball swings out, your shoulders are the pivot point, but your entire body has to stabilize your body. Yeah, yeah. So as your body starts so you're to you're flexing rock, the whole time. Yeah, 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 all the way down through your core, your hips, everything trying to anchor back to the ground. Yeah. And so it's a full stability work for your full body. And I feel like just everything's in connection now. Yeah, yeah. good, good, nice. Yeah. I, it's kind of off subject, but I got a question for you. Yeah. Uh, my brother, he dislocated his shoulder, yeah. had surgery, I think like two, three times. Yeah. And he's got a pin in there. And it, it still pops out from time yeah. time to time. And the last time it popped out, he was just sleeping and woke up like, fuck, and my arm's out, I got to go to the hospital. And he's been wanting to get in the gym. And he's like, he's like, but I'm scared to like, how, how do I rebuild the shoulder strength? You know, I was wondering, you got any tips on that? Shoulders are tough. Yeah. I'm not a doctor. I didn't know what to tell him I'm, either. <laughs> I'm not a doctor, but shoulders are tough. Did you see the last TJ Dillashaw fight? I did not, know. Okay. Uh, his shoulder popped out and he like tried to pop it back and tried to pop it back and got it back in and then lost in the second round. Uh, When your shoulder, again, not a doctor, but the way that I understand it is you have a shoulder uh, piece and then you have the ball and socket. Some people's ball and socket is flatter than others and they are more prone to a dislocation. Okay. Now, once the dislocation happens, you're more likely to have another dislocation. Yeah, yeah. That's what they said. To the point where it's just always popping out. Yeah. Uh, ligaments are tough to rebuild. Uh, you can you know, build up the, the housing with muscles and everything, but there's so many moving components. Shoulders are tough. Yeah. There's weird things like frozen shoulder, where they're locked, they can't lift it up. A lot of the times... I'm like that with his elbow. Yeah. Broke his elbow. Yeah. Fucking there, you could hang on it. As a kid, I would hang on yeah. it. And you, nothing, dude. Nothing. There's... And it's interesting because a lot of times, shoulder issues are happening in the chest. They're happening back in your back. And it's not actually your shoulder that's yeah. the cause. Now, dislocation it is in the shoulder. But a lot of times people will complain about pain up here and it's actually their grips and uh, through their bicep and chest that's causing the issue. So where you feel the pain doesn't necessarily mean that that's where the issue is. Yeah, yeah. So if you have like a bicep, when I go to flex the bicep, the bicep gets shorter and that's where the power goes from. 
but if the tricep won't lengthen and relax, you can no longer get that. And so if I'm trying to flex my bicep and my tricep won't extend, I'm going to feel the pain yeah, in yeah, my yeah. tricep. Um, and so it's it, it can go back and forth. Your body has to work in unison. And if, say, you got a knot or something fucked up in there, it's not going to relax. It's not going to yeah, release. Yeah, yeah. And now all of a sudden you're dealing with another injury because of a and it's all a chain. It goes yeah. up and down. So one thing will cause the next thing to go. You'll see people that walk with a limp and they think that it's their knee, but it's actually coming out of their hip. So yeah, there's all yeah. kinds of things that happen in that connective chain. But back to your, who is it? Your, My brother. Your brother. Yeah, getting into rehab on it, start I would just recommend starting super light. Yeah, that's and, what I told him. And building up what he can. So because even if you're doing two-pound dumbbells. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, At a certain point, there is going to be a stressor that will dislocate it again. But if he doesn't do anything, or you know, doctors like to give the cortisone shots and everything, that is just breaking you down. Yeah, it's yeah. never going to get any care better. Of the, it takes care of the pain, but you're not going to get better. And so I have a knee issue that's kind of like a reoccurring thing, and it's... I strengthen it, strengthen it, strengthen it as much as I can and everything within bounds. But it, there's always a little thing yeah, that yeah, pops yeah. in it from time to time. And it's like, all right, rest it, uh, heal it. Same with mine. From there. Yeah. Been to the doctors, had the x-rays. And they're just like, yeah, it, it's it's all good. You don't have any ligament damage or anything. It's just loose ligaments. Uh, and uh, it's perfectly normal. It's like, okay, well, great. So I do what I can as far as rehabbing it and stuff. But... You know, getting older, something I'm going to have to deal with for the rest of my life. Yeah, just dealing with it. Yep. Yeah, Yeah. definitely. Yeah, that sucks, though, just having to, you know, at any given moment, just pop and you got to deal with that. It first popped when I was 26 years old, and that put me out for a little bit, but, you know, it's like once a year or something, I I deal with it. So it's not crazy often, but it's, you know, the last time it happened, I was out for a while. It was like two months of like yeah. really really slow training walking around on crutches and that sort of thing yeah, which yeah, was yeah. the first time i've had to get out crutches on it which really sucked it yeah. like locked i couldn't extend it or anything Ooh. and then now it's doing pretty good i can yeah. move i can pivot i can do all the things on it um you know again doing all the strength training that i can again to it and yeah, yeah. you know starting from scratch again i'm sure it's going to have another setback and, yeah, yeah. you know, I'll rehab it again. And Does that ever bring you into, like, a form of depression or anything like that? You know, we got the you got one body, you got one life. Yeah. So you <sighs> slide into that finish line. <laughs> like, I'm not going to be crawling into the finish line because I'm old and feeble. I'm going to be sliding into yeah, it yeah. because I'm old and active, right? So yeah. you can age out or you can work out. Exactly. You you can choose to decay, or you can. I used to work on like uh, mechanical stuff and everything. Yeah. And I lived in Hawaii, and everything rusts out there. So the only thing worse than using something is not using something. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's gonna break no matter I, what you that's do. That's a good analogy. I like that. And so you can just let it sit there, and like, you can take perfect care of it and everything, as long as if the. Things aren't spinning. If the motor's not running, yeah. it's going to fall apart. Exactly. You know, when you go to use it, guess what happens with that engine you haven't used in four years? Yeah. Bang, bang, crack. Oh, it's dead. Yeah. Now it's really dead. Whereas if you were, you know, at least running that thing, it had put in all that work along the way, all the enjoyment, all the, you know, yeah. yards that it had mowed. You got what you could out of it. All exactly. that progress that it did, or it can sit there and look pretty. Yeah. It's like... And then still break it around the same time. Exactly. So use what you got. Like, yeah. it, as you get older, there's going to be things that pop up, and you yeah. just got to deal with them. Exactly. Like, work around them the yeah. best that you can. Don't. So you're not letting it be an excuse. No, right? no, 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 still, no, no. Still no. taking care of business. F that. Yeah. Excuses are, are garbage. I like that. Yeah. No excuses will just hinder yourself. Yeah. Like this, right? I'm like my shoulder hurts like hell. Yeah. Um. But here we are, right? We're mm-hmm. doing the podcast. I got kids' classes coming up after. I got adults' classes. Probably won't roll, right? Going to take yeah, it light yeah, today. Yeah. Going to heal up, be a responsible adult. Yeah, you don't want to May- be a dumbass. Maybe not something <laughs> I would have done 10 years ago, right? I would have probably just 
went for it again today, but you know, being but then older, that's why our bodies are the way they are now. Being older, wiser, I'll take the time that I need for it. Um, but I'm not gonna like, oh man, my shoulder hurts, so I'm out for two weeks and not doing anything. Like, yeah, that doesn't serve anyone. That doesn't no. serve me. That doesn't serve the people that I'm trying to help build. Definitely. And yeah, just being that role model, that example that you know people can look at. Yeah. And aspire to because our actions say w- way more than our words do. Yeah. And so, if I call in sick today because my shoulder hurts, well, next time somebody's shoulder hurts, I can't say shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, your shoulder hurts. I want you to come in and I want you to kick the bag. Yeah. I, mean, I can't say that if I call out. Yeah. No, I'm going to work my right arm if I can today and I'm going to throw some kicks and I'm going to do some th- things. You yeah. know, I might pull guard a couple times and see how exactly, that goes, yeah. but. I'm not going to do full rolls and everything, and that's just being yeah. responsible. Yeah, that's what I try to tell my brother, too. I'm like, there's still things you can do in the gym, really. Yeah. You can leave your shoulder completely alone. Your shoulder's you know. messed up. You better have the best legs there are. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, I don't want to fucking do that shit every day. I mean, there's <laughs> and people, I get it, but there, there's, there's people with you no do, yeah. legs, and they are jacked, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's what I think about when I think when my knee thing pops up. I'm like, there's people without a whole leg, right? Yeah. They were off in the war and their leg got blown off. Yeah, yeah. And they're still out doing the thing. Like, who am I to yeah. mess around with a knee? Oh, yeah. my knee hurts. Exactly. Oh, my shoulder yeah. hurts. They don't even have the limb. Yeah. Like, that's, that's how I like to look at it too with my diet. Like, when, when I get like discouraged or like I'm super hungry, I'm like, fuck, I just want to eat. Or I'm like, like, kind of like, kind of like complaining to myself like oh i'm tired of eating the same shit you know and i'm like i'm like fuck i don't want this right now and then it's like it's like you want grateful bitch look at all the motherfucking people out there that that have no food would kill to have 1500 calories of food every day and you're complaining because you can't eat a fucking ice cream and a cheeseburger drinking (laughs) water out your faucet right (laughs) all these things that we take for granted and you see this in society so much yeah. of like any little inconvenience all the karens and everything yeah. freaking out about nothing yeah. and it's almost shameful because we live in a country that what do you think other countries look at us and go oh fat americans right because <laughs> yeah. we take everything for granted yeah and as soon as anything... We just, don't know how good we have We lose the internet for an hour. We are losing our minds. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember last winter, dude, like I was on this thing. I was on that cold shower hype, yeah. right? So yeah. I wake up at 2 in the morning, I take a cold shower, be freezing cold. And, and it was crazy. And I was happy doing it. And I felt good. And then I, I was talking to Chris and I was like, but you know what? If I woke up every day at 2 o'clock in the morning because, and, and I had to take a cold shower because I didn't pay the fucking water bill... Yeah. I was like, I would be butthurt and complaining, but because I'm choosing to do it, yeah. it's not a big deal. But yeah. if it was if yeah. it was on the other foot, I'd, imposed I'd, I'd, yeah, upon exactly, you, exactly, yeah. 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 So I was like, I was like, that that really made me realize like mm-hmm. like how good we have it and how how much we take shit for granted. Yeah, no, it's it's kind of crazy the what we expect and what we you know put our money into yeah. also. So we expect all these things and. Uh, financially we'll do the same thing and put ourselves in ruin just buying useless crap and then we're like oh the water bill is you know whatever a hundred bucks or whatever and it's a hundred dollars for water to your door clean (laughs) drinking water that's hot and ready to go and it just you know if you go back a hundred years man they would work all day long to try to make that right exactly you see that some places and some tribes and everything they're carrying uh water pails on their head for yeah. you know hundreds of yards yeah. and you know miles and and we're yeah. complaining that when we flip the faucet sometimes it doesn't go on yeah. you know, our, our water was shut off because of a plumbing issue um the other day and you know no notice or anything so it had to have been an emergency you have a condo so yeah, yeah. they usually give the 24 48 hour notice Such an inconvenience, <laughs> and, and, and they didn't do it this time so i knew there was something going to me on too. i was pissed and you go you flip on but there's a store two minutes away yeah. right it's not like and i was like whoa that was good i got you know my son who's uh two years old water before that but yeah. Open the fridge. There's milk. There's lemonade. There's all these different things that yeah, yeah. you know. You nothing's gonna happen in the hour that it's off. Yeah. You can drive two minutes down to the store. We have all these conveniences yeah, in life. Yeah. yeah, but at first it was like, 
what the? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, for yeah. a moment. And, but there's some people that would be hung up on that for days. Yeah, yeah. They'd be complaining. They'd be calling all the different places. And it is what it that, is. That's what it is because we don't realize how good we really do have yeah. it. Like, even though we all have struggles and we're all going through shit, it's like at the end of the day, dude, you got fucking shelter. You got a place to fucking... You got water, you got food, you're good, you know? And then, like, you think back back in the day, like, cavemen and shit, like, yeah. they got to wake up every day and go on the hunt for food. A hundred years ago, 200 years ago. Yeah. yeah. You've worked in the farms and stuff. Yeah. If you didn't get up... The, He's it, sick, his, his leg hurts, his back hurts, he you know? takes the day off. It's like, you don't eat. Your family don't eat. Something like my ribs or something yeah. happens, you can't get out to the cows, you can't get out and do the things. Well, what's going to happen? The cows are going to have issues because they weren't milked that day. Yeah, and, yeah. and you just had to do it yeah no just, choice just to survive right we're not even talking about like thriving just yeah. day-to-day chores in order to make things happen exactly and it's it's so easy to get caught up of like oh that was so long ago no that was your grandparents parents yeah. right like your grandparents parents like they didn't have penicillin yeah. they didn't have anything exactly you had all these things that were happening you got you know um uh like, uh, what is it called? Um, staph infection. Oh, You're dead. Yeah. You know, little things like that. Yeah. Uh, we take so many things for granted, and it's it's even things like my knee. Yeah. Right? Well, I was able to go to the doctor. I was able to get x-rays and actually see what was going on. Back then, I'd be like, ah, you got a bad knee. Yeah. <laughs> Can Get you away. walk? All right, yeah, good. Yep. Can't? All right, we'll hobble around for the rest of your life because yeah. that's what you got. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and so it, it's a trip, though, to think about it. And then people will be like, oh, that was so long ago. But then yet look at today and how everything is falling yeah. apart. Yeah. yeah. It's like you wonder why. So, so it is re-collapsing <laughs> yeah. because yeah, it's you know? so soft. You know, the yeah. good, or easy times make you know weak men. Yeah, and then hard or hard times make strong men. And like how everybody's so depressed. Right? Yeah, it's because you're not you're not trying to build nothing. You're not chasing yeah. something that fulfills you. Exactly. You know? You're sitting on the fucking couch or waking up and being entitled and having yeah. it easy as fuck. You have to contribute to society. Yeah. I really think that that is a driving factor in our existence. How many times have you heard about a guy retiring and dying? All the time. When we stop being productive to society, society no longer needs us and our body knows that. Yeah. They, they say life expectancy after retirement is like, I think it was like six to eight years. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of times people get less than that because all of a sudden... I, I could be wrong, but I remember yeah. it's, it's short. It's not yeah, a lot of time. I don't know the numbers on it, but so many times you see people... They retire, and then, you know, that first day, they're like, I've retired. And then they're sitting on the couch for the next two years not doing yeah. anything. Yeah. And they, and they fall get into, sick, they get cancer. Like, they get sick, they yeah. fall into depression, all these different things. Whereas they, if they would have just been like, okay, I'm retiring from my job, but here's my passion. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go growing. I'm Still gonna growing. go help as many people yeah. as I can because now I have the time to do so. Exactly. And I think that plays a huge role on, yeah. you know, that – actual life duration that yeah, you have yeah. because the people that you do see in your 90 in their 90s they're never the people that are just sitting on the couch no. everyone that i've made, known that have been in their 90s are out mowing the grass they're out doing the things yeah. even simple tasks they have a routine every day so the tasks yeah. get smaller and smaller because you know their capabilities yeah. start to dwindle but they are giving everything they can each day and they're just puttering around, but they're constantly doing something. They're never the people that are just sitting on the couch. That's what. That's why I like that saying. Uh, if you're not growing, you're dying. Because yeah. essentially, you are. Like if you're just sitting there not doing nothing, like time's moving. You're dying. I'll I'll put this into the video, probably right here somewhere. <laughs> um, Stuart, last night he started at 61 years old. He's got mobility issues. Yeah. Couldn't ca- couldn't kick anyone up past their knee is now up to hip height but he was doing the box the jumps box, jump, yep. box jumps yeah. last night one more, one more. literally he could not oh, lift God. his leg above somebody else's knee yeah. for a kick last night he was doing step ups on the box jump nice and nice. i said stuart i bet you can't do a, a box jump and he lines up with the box Bang! Lands it first try. He did like three, right? Three he did one? like eight of them. Oh, shit. Bang! Feet. 
And he's been on, you know, this fitness journey for since we started the fitness program about, what is it, uh, eight months. That's Se- how long he's been a member? Or what? Seven, eight months. He's been doing our fitness program for that oh, okay. long. And, uh, you know, again, started with a lot of flexibility, mobility issues. Yeah. And hit a box jump. 24-inch, yeah, 24-inch vertical leap yeah, yeah, yeah. onto a box. No running start or anything. Bang, you guys will see the video. Actually, it's hard for me. Man, that makes me feel so good. Like, ah, <laughs> oh, I get so worked up about it uh, because these are the, like the little things as a coach that I, I get to see. I never thought of it from your perspective. Oh like, my god, it's so amazing. It. Yeah. I feel. Uh, it's like I, I, I did that. I helped you. We had. Yeah, that's gotta feel good. It was twice in one way. So yesterday morning, also we had uh, the jujitsu class in the morning, and. She's not the first person to cry on the mats. Like it's happened. Like uh, whether it's it's a personal thing or whatever. But she was saying, you know, she's forty five years old. She never thought that she would be able to do something like this. And you know, she's doing jujitsu with her friend and everything now. And we're keeping it nice and light and simple, and you know, running through the very very basics. But she's doing it yeah. right. She's yeah. kickboxing. She's been kickboxing for seven months yeah. now. Never thought she could ever do that. Now she's in jujitsu, loving it, working out with her friends and stuff, and the support and everything. But she broke down crying. She's like, "Man, I, I let my body go. I didn't think I was ever going to get back to this yeah, type yeah. of a point." And you know, she's got a lot of way, long way to go. She'll say it. Yeah. But the progress that she's made and so many people have made, man, it, it just like. It breaks my heart that they feel like they had let themselves go and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But man, it inspires me, and yeah. it makes me want to do this sort of thing and like yeah, yeah. advertise and just yeah. get every single person exactly. I know into it because I see those experiences, and the general public doesn't. Every time I hear one of those stories, man, I, I just get revitalized and yeah, just yeah. fired up. That, that's the shit that yeah. brings me to tears in yeah. like movies and shit. It's just that that solid inspiration, yeah. dude. And it's like, and it's real life. Yeah, it's not yeah. staged. It's not written. No. It's like, bang, it happens every day. Yeah, and it's it's so random when it does happen, yeah. right? Because they've worked for six months, you know, seven, eight months, a year for this, yeah. and then one day they can do something that they never did before. Yeah, that's and, amazing. And just. They either light up like Stuart did last night or they break down crying going, man, I thought my life was different. I thought it was going downhill at 45 years old. Stuart's, I think, 61, 62. And, you know, he's going to be walking and thriving through his 70s now because he's made that change. And, you know, with the way that he came in, there was probably a pretty steep downward uh, spiral that he was going in changed everything and so when i that sort of thing inspires me but the when people don't come in it also wrecks me (laughs) i have so many family members and everything that you know we're doing amazing work in here but they're not coming in my cousin did i was looking at her attendance card she's been in in three days a week for the last two months like fucking rocking it uh, but I haven't filled that thing out in like a week and a half. <laughs> but there is. <laughs> but a, I was like, I'm here, dude. I know I'm here, so that's all I care about. But I have so many family members out there who like believe in me and they're like cheering me on and everything, but they won't come in. Yeah. And it's like if I can't get my family in, how am I supposed to get you know random people in? And they are coming in. Random people are coming okay. in, and I, I give them everything I can. But I would love to get also get my family in here. Yeah. I'd love to get everybody's family. I'd love to like just pack this place and then expand and expand because yeah, yeah. I want to take care of everyone. Yeah. Uh, so as a coach, I'm like, I love those little moments. Is that a goal for you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because I know there's not, there's a lot of places out there that could be better. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of places that people aren't getting these same experiences. Yeah. And... I don't want them to start somewhere else and then not have an opportunity to yeah. see the result and then become more discouraged. And so when I first started, I heard somebody say, if they're not training at your place, then they may be training at some... Uh, it was uh, McDojo Life, actually. If they're not training with you and you're offering a great service then they're training at somebody else's place and not getting a great service. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of great places out there, but there's a lot of terrible places out yeah. there. And so 
the bigger I can make mine because I know my I have a good system, yeah. the more people I can get in here, I'm saving from bad experiences at other places. Yeah, yeah. And that's the way that I really look at it. So my growth is I'm trying to help people find the right place. Yeah. And if I stay small, if I stood stayed in my garage, all these people that I've helped would never have gotten the assistance yeah. that they need. It would have been you and a few other people, which would have been great, right? Yeah, yeah. But I've helped hundreds of people at this point. Yeah. And the bigger that I can get, the more I can help. Exactly. And so that's my inspiration in growing. Yeah. Because if I can make, you know, a living at 40 people, that's fantastic. And yeah. I can help those 40 people. We can have a, a very, you know, intimate, tight group. But everyone else gets left out. Yeah. And I don't want to do that to yeah. people. You know, uh, somebody told me that the other day. Uh, my uh, nutrition coach, he actually told me, he's like, because I hit him up, I was like, well, he, he, he's the one who talked me into mm -hmm. starting right now. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't feel like I'm ready right now. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, no, you are. You're trying to undermine what you've done, yeah. all the struggles you went through, everything you've learned. And then when, when you asked me how much, I'm like, oh, I don't know. Let me hit him up. And I hit him up and asked, and he told me those prices. He's like, I know what you're thinking, dude. It's, yeah. It sounds like a lot. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, but he's like, you deserve it. And for the work you put in, that, that, that's what it is. And he's like, he's like, and don't feel like you're not ready because when you think of it like this, he's like, maybe there's somebody that wouldn't, wouldn't want to learn from me yeah. because of how I am. Mm -hmm. But because you're not that far from where they are. Yeah. They they would want to learn from you, like bigger dudes. He's like, you, you dropped 100 pounds. Yeah. And he, he's like, uh, so if, if you say you want to wait until you're ready and where I am, he's like, imagine all the people that miss out on that opportunity or the people you miss out on helping because yeah. you felt you weren't ready when when you had value to offer. And so I was like, okay. And you just you just nailed it. Same I've been, exact thing. I've been pushing you to do it yeah, too, yeah. right? Just like, just do it. Just yeah. do it. Because you've done it. Yeah. Like you can't say. That's what he said. He's like, he's you, like, if someone hits you up and needed help doing this and that, he's like, you would know how to help them, right? And I'm like, yeah. You've dropped over a hundred pounds. Yeah. Like, you know the process of what needs to be done to drop mm -hmm. the weight. Somebody like me, I could give somebody like nutrition advice and everything, but I've never dropped weight. Yeah. I've always struggled to gain weight. So, you know, if I was to help somebody gain weight, I might have a perspective on it. But, yeah. uh. Dropping weight is just foreign to me, right? My body won't hold weight. And so dropping weight is just like, okay, stop eating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'll drop weight. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you've been there. You've done it. There's yeah. no bigger testimony than you can have than yourself. Yeah, right? so I, I really liked how he's like, don't close the door because, you know. And the more people you help, the better you'll, better you'll get at it. Exactly. The more time. If I waited to start the kickboxing studio until I had every single technique perfect and I knew exactly how to explain it to you. Yeah. Here comes somebody who has a completely different body type life experience yeah. and I'm trying to use the perfect way to teach you a round kick and the way that they're listening to that is completely different. Yeah. So the more people that you help, the more ways you figure out to explain the situation yeah, yeah. to Articulate them. Articulate it to them. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Because everyone learns different. I have like main cues that I give. Okay, turn this here. The three pieces. Do, 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 do that. Okay. Okay, so you're not turning over your shoulder when you throw in the round kick. Okay, so let's fix that. Turn your shoulder, turn with the hip. Okay, that didn't work. Okay, so you start problem solving, right? What can you tell this person or show this person so that they understand the technique? And everyone has a different way yeah, of yeah. understanding it. And so until you've worked with a hundred different people, you don't yeah, know how yeah. to even tell them to start. So I did appliance repair. And so you start learning the highest percentages, right? Yeah. If I say this combination of words, most people are going to learn how to do it with this. Yeah. But there's always going to be a subcategory of people who don't respond to those words. Okay, yeah. so we've gone through the major part. 
Now, let's break it down to like a secondary. Okay, this actually works the best for the next group and then the next yeah. group. And then every now and then you're like, man, this person just really doesn't. And then it's like, all right, how... Just trying to simplify everything, right? How yeah. could I better explain it to this person? And then, well, once I figure out how I got that person to learn it better, well, now I'm a better teacher because now the next person that comes in, if they have that same thing. So I've experienced exactly. a wide range of people that I've taught. And you just learn how to teach it more efficiently. It's always like... Uh, you want to get your students better than you, quicker yeah. than what you got there. And if you're not, you're failing as a coach. Yeah. If you can't get your student to the place that you were faster, you're not trying. Yeah. Because you have all the knowledge. That's of, the whole point of having a coach. You have you all know? the knowledge of you learning. So they don't have to go through that trial and, and error. You've gone through so many things. And there's always going to be things that people have to try and fail in order yeah, to yeah, get yeah. to the next step where they can actually hear the next step. Yeah. right? Um, but oh, cleaning up that ex explanation and reducing the fluff and everything and just making it better for the next generation, the next generation. Yeah. You should always be trying to expedite that process. Yeah, yeah definitely. You, know, you always want your student to do better than you. That's yeah. you know the sign of a, a mastery, right? Is yeah. getting that person better than you. And so, if you're a coach and you're holding back information, or because you don't want your student as good as you, yeah. I like thrive when you know one of my blue belts is run, like making me work. Yeah, yeah. Like was last night until he <laughs> was uh, I'll, I'll beep the name uh like our blue belt was last night he was he was working and he was keeping me on my toes that whole time yeah. but uh it's i want that right yeah. i'm a brown belt he's a blue belt and he's making me work for it that's perfect i've yeah. taught him how to get past my guard I've taught him all the things that I like to do. And so he knows exactly how to attack it, right? Yeah. And now I get better because now he knows exactly what I like to do. I got to do it better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got to do it better. Exactly. And so, so many times when I'm teaching classes, I'm always like, this is my favorite technique. This is something that I'm working yeah. on. This is how I do it. Exploit it. Yeah. Figure it out. Figure out how to do it. Figure out how to beat me because that makes me better. Yeah. Right? The more things that... If I just, you know, throw an arm bar on you a thousand times and never show you how I do it or never show you the grips and things that I'm trying to do, yeah. well, I'm an asshole. Yeah. Like, I, I well, should be going, I should get my 10 wins or whatever, my 10 subs and be like, all right, all right, come here, come here. This right. is what I'm doing. You're not breaking this grip. You yeah. got to break this grip. Exactly. All right. Oh, oh, the weight, you know, stack and then pull the arm off. Don't just try to explode out, right? Yeah. Little things like that. If I never tell you to do that, you're going to go to the competition and do that. Yeah. And then, oh. You broke your arm in competition <laughs> because coach didn't tell you, you to pull. Tell you that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. if you're holding information back and you're a coach, you're a fucked up coach. Yeah. Uh, teach, teach your students exactly what they need to do yeah. to beat you, and then get better. Yeah, yeah, because that, that's where that's what where, where you want to be. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's where you want them because that's the whole point. And so. if you have you know a student and they're going to a different place and they're smashing the higher ranks that's always a good feeling yeah, too, right? yeah definitely. Um, respectfully yeah <laughs> but yeah that, that was his whole point he's like he's like you just gotta learn as you go you just gotta get people yeah. under your belt and the more the more people you help you, the more experience you have and he's like you're just gonna grow from there he's like but don't wait he's yeah. like you're, you're ready now and don't don't wait you so. we were talking about this before there's a point of jumping off yeah. When I started, you know, my business and wasn't super ready to yeah. do it, but I don't think I ever would have been super no. ready to do it. I could have gone to college for 20 years and, yeah. you know, uh, been underneath a, another gym owner for 20 years. Yeah. And without actually doing it, there's so many things that pop up when you start doing it. If I show you an arm bar, you'll be able to do the arm bar against white belts maybe. And then you go against the blue belt and you're like, what the heck is happening? Yeah. Okay, so that business model, something failed in it, right? Yeah. So we need that business model to now beat blue belts. So yeah. let's bring it back in. That. Let's refine it. Yeah. All right, now you're beating blue belts. Oh, we're up okay. against the purple belts now. It's a different level. All right, so here's what you need to do with your business plan to get to the next step. And exactly. so many times we can't get to that further steps unless we've done the prerequisites. Yeah. We can't Because I'll show a technique. 
you know, relating this back to jujitsu, I'll show a technique and I'll keep it super simple. I'll yeah. keep it very, very basic. Three steps, bang, 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 go do it. And then they'll learn those three steps. I'll pull them back in and say, okay, now we have, now that you have the picture of it, now we need to refine this. We're going to slide our grip up a little bit higher. We're going to do yeah. this. If I would have told you all the little details when I first taught you, you'd be so confused yeah. in going into and that. You would have missed half of it. You, anyway, yeah. right? So yeah. even though I gave you every single detail along the way, I, I told you I spent an hour explaining this arm bar. Yeah. You're going to go over there and hit the first three. Yeah. You're never going to see any of the little details until, yeah, yeah, yeah. until you've experienced the three major steps. Exactly. Now that the three major steps, your leg goes here, your leg goes here, your arm goes here. Cool. We're in position. Now, slide it up. Take an inch. Take an inch. Yeah. Your grip, flip it over. You squeeze the knees a little bit. Squeeze the knees <laughs> yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Yank them in when you're yeah. sitting back. So many little, little things. Definitely. That your mind's not even going to if you don't know yeah. the roadmap. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, for sure. But the weight loss journey and you coaching, I'm super excited. You've had a few people reach out to you? Yeah, I've had a, quite a bit of people mm -hmm. reach out to me, you know. Nothing, nothing solid yet, but the fact they're reaching out and asking questions, that, that's, yeah. that's good for me. And uh, I was telling my coach, too, because he, he's like, I think it was Friday I started and by like, Sunday, I had people hit me up, yeah. and he, he's like, he's like, wow, he's like, that's that's crazy. He's like, it took me like five weeks to get anybody to even ask me questions. Yep. He's like, so this is good. And then, uh, you know, he he's hyping me up too. He'll comment on my stuff and be like, like man, that that was dope, dude. He's like, I yeah. love that. You know, just you have such a, a unique experience too, because everyone has followed your everyone on social media that you have has followed your growth and you're you're dropping weight and everything yeah, yeah. so they've seen this they've seen your dedication for the last two three years or longer than that oh man that's a long, a long time yeah, yeah wow yeah because we're coming up on being open for five years and yeah. that was like when you had started right, right when i started mm -hmm. that was right right before i started i, I lost the initial like 20 30 pounds that mm -hmm. like got me in the door and yeah it's going yeah it, which is crazy but and that shit seemed like it took forever. Yeah. Like, I feel like that took me, like, the longest. Like, I want to say, like, to lose that first 20, 30 pounds, I, maybe, like, a year and a half. Because mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was doing, and it just yeah. kept coming back. And But then something clicked. Yeah. And once I, once I got to that point, then it was like, okay. And it was, it was done. When you're going from your white belt to your blue belt, there's a similar type of thing. You just feel like you're spinning your wheels. You're doing all these different movements, but nothing's really, the sinking isn't clicking. And then all of a sudden you're like, bang, what the heck just happened? Like, yeah. you know, you're going along this thing and then all of a sudden, bam, now you're hitting things. And it's like, whoa, this is cool. Mm -hmm. And then you start trying new things and then it starts fizzling back down again. It's like, okay, well, what's happening? You know, and then bang. You have another uh, experience because when you're trying new things, sometimes you don't get the results that you want right away. Yeah. But then you have this new tool in your toolbox once it's refined. Because the first time you try, you know, uh, um, to take mount or whatever, every time you get flipped, yeah. it's like, oh, or you go knee on belly, they scoot out, take your back, whatever it is. Yeah. But then you get good at knee on belly and now you have a new tool in your arsenal. So your game just skyrockets. But for that time that you were trying that new technique, your back was being taken over and over and over again yeah, until yeah. you dialed it in, and now, boom, you have a new technique on. And blue belts are kind of the same thing. When you transition to going towards your purple belt, there's a refining moment that happens, and things change. And it's hard to explain. It's super hard to explain. And when you ask, oh, coach, what do I need to do to get to my blue belt? Well, we can give you a list of techniques and everything. But there's really a mindset, there's a feeling, there's a, a something that happens in your jujitsu yeah, yeah. that just skyrockets everything. Yeah. All right. Uh, and so you just got to practice until you hit that. Yeah. And it, that can be discouraging because you might have a flat line. You might not be losing any weight or anything. And then all of a sudden you make one little change and yeah. then the pounds just start dropping off. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, I like that. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm excited to see where things are gonna go. Yeah, you know, and, and to just better further my learning and my knowledge on the subject. So, are you can you've upped your calorie intake? Yeah, yeah. 
Are you still trying to get down to I am. the 5%? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, and I was talking to my coach about that too, and, and he still thinks it's doable. He, he's like, he's like, it may be longer than, a longer time frame than the 90 days because yeah. we've upped your calories and yeah. your macros and everything. But, but you're feeling better. I am, and I'm sleeping better, and, and I still dropped two pounds since last week, so that yes. so that was good. But, I mean, we still got a ways to go, and yeah. I think... Uh, week 9, right? We, this would be week 10. Week 10. Sunday would be the end of week 10. Nice. So I'll have an update update this week, and then two weeks left, and then I'll, I'll let you guys know where I'm at, and, yeah. you know? But, I mean, I, I started 12 pounds heavier, Yeah. you know, 10 weeks ago. So, I mean, I've made progress, but I've messed up a few times, too. Yeah. Slipped up, fell off for a day or two. You know, yep. got back on. Yep. But uh, when I was on that that low of calories too, every time I'd slip up, I felt like when I'd slip up, it was it was worse because I would eat because I was like, my mindset was like, well, I already fucked up. So I'm eating and I'm just going to eat this because today's the day I can have it. Yeah. And I'm not even hungry. I'm eating to the point where I'm like sick. And then I just gain all that shit back you know a lot of people do that yeah. it's like oh i messed up on this so i'm just gonna oh it's a cheat day instead of a cheap meal right? yeah, yeah and then the whole day all of a sudden it's six thousand calories later yeah. and there's two pounds that you've added yeah. uh, so. and, and then i wake up the next morning and i got like a, a specific routine you know like make breakfast before i go to work and usually that would be like my biggest meal because i'd be you know hungry from the day before you know yeah. 30,000 steps, I'm fucking starving, right? So that'd be like, probably like 600, 700 calorie meal, you know, and I'm only eating 15 throughout the day. But then when I would binge and I'd eat everything the night before, I'd wake up the next morning. Well, I'm not fucking hungry. So I won't even make breakfast. And then I'll I'll be like, well, I'll just fast, you know? And then, so I start through the work day. I didn't bring food with me because I was like, well, I'm not even hungry. I'm not even thinking about food. And then I'm like, well, shit, now I'll just buy a fucking snack or get something at a gas station because yeah. I'm at work. And then then so the one day turned into two days because then I didn't prepare on the yeah. second day, you know, so it's a cascade effect. Yeah. Yeah. And now now it's like I don't even have that feeling because me hearing you that that you went up to twenty one hundred yeah. calories as like two thousand ninety, but it's pretty, pretty close. OK, that's yeah. what I meant. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it's. As, like, an athlete and, like, somebody who, like, goes for it, yeah. things and stuff, I like that you're eating more calories but working out more yeah. and trying to offset it that way. Yeah. Because I feel like you're you're treating your body better doing that than yeah. just being in such a calorie deficit. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I'm still in a deficit because my maintenance would be, like, 25. But you yeah. still have the extra calories to help yeah, build yeah, your yeah. body. Exactly. There's... And more carbs. I feel like my muscles are popping more too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is so good. Because there's a thing of being skinny yeah. and another thing of being fit. Yeah. And I think you'll be more fit at the lower weight if you do it a little bit slower but maintain the calories. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it, has, it hasn't slowed down that much really. Like I said, my goal is two to three pounds a week. Yeah. And since I've upped the macros, I've still lost two pounds since last week. And was today Friday, and I started last Friday. Yeah. So yeah, it's been a week. So you guys out there, if you are putting something off or not doing something, you need to find the support to get out there and do it because nobody's coming to save you. Definitely not. If you're waiting for your white knight to show up and rescue <laughs> you, you're going to be sitting there for a while. Yep. Uh, put yourself out there. You got to save yourself. That's what it's all about. Go fail. Go fail, go fail, go fail. Because that's the only way to succeed is failing a lot. Get your butts off the couch. Deal with the pain. Deal with the suffering. Deal with the emotional damage. Deal with whatever you got to do. Deal with the depression. Deal with whatever it is. But you got to move. You got to get your body in motion. You got to start thinking about things. You got to start doing things. Don't be the person that sits around planning for everything but doing nothing because exactly. that's a tough spot yeah. to excel at. You just yeah. sit there and think about everything. And so many of us do it, right? We all have business ideas or we all have yeah. certain goals that we want to achieve. And we always think about how are we going to do that, but we're never doing anything. Exactly. If you want to do 100 push-ups in a day, start with five. Just go do five every single day for a month and then 10 every single day for a month. And then all of a sudden you're going to be like, oh man, I can 
you know, crank out 50 push-ups in one setting and then 60 and so on. So if you want to do 100 push-ups, you can't just think about wanting to do 100 push-ups for a year. Yeah. you you got to go out there. Or watch YouTube videos on how yeah, to do push-ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go do five, right? Five is like, oh, yeah. five five's too easy. That's not going to do anything for me. Yes, it will. Go yeah, do something. That, that's how it was with uh, me studying nutrition. Yeah. I was like, well, I'm studying. I'm, I'm working towards it. And it's like, no, nah, the studying is almost an excuse to not go do it. You have so to apply just, it. Just go do it. You have to apply yeah. it. So go apply it. Yep. All right.